All right, what's up guys? So I have done this jerky before for coworkers, friends, family, whatever, and everybody loves it. I used to use a top round, bottom round, but now I actually prefer skirt steak, flank steak. This is about 5.25 pounds of uh, skirt steak, and it cost this much. So it's really no secret or anything. And this is actually wildly simple. You just get a thing of pineapple chunks or pineapple rings. I do like Dole better than any other brand. Uh, it's sweeter. Um, and then for the teriyaki sauce or marinade, see how this is like a little thin? Um, honestly, I typically go for something that just has like a little thicker of a consistency, but they were actually all sold out. So first step, now, if you were doing like just two packs of these, I'm making this for like coworkers, family, friends and stuff. Um, so that's why I got a lot. But if I was to just make this for myself, I would probably just do two packages. And for two packages, I would just use one can and one bottle. So you're just going to juice and all, dump everything in, now the pineapple, the reason that I got this idea and I started doing it, one, I mean, I just love pineapple, but two, pineapple has bromelain in it. What bromelain does to meat, from what I understand, is it tenderizes it. That's why when you eat pineapple, you get that like kind of tingly feeling in your mouth. Uh, so not only does it make the meat taste better, it just gives it like a better texture too. And then for the teriyaki, uh, do this. It's definitely a lot easier. Just do them at the same time and then just pour them in. Now you are gonna want this blended up pretty well. So like I'll put it on medium and then just go start prepping food and stuff like that. And by prepping food, I just mean like cutting the meat or something like that. Leave it on for a few minutes. It's gonna get thin. It's also gonna get a little frothy, that's okay. Uh, the biggest thing later on is you're going to be mixing it by hand like every 6 to 12 hours because we're going to let this marinate for like at least 48, if not 72 hours. All right, so once it's done, you're just going to pour, oh, pour it all in the bowl. Don't make as much of a mess as I did, especially if you have a girlfriend or a wife. I do like to give it a smell, just cause like, I don't know, it reminds me of what the meat's gonna taste like. But what you should do ideally is you're gonna cut your meat and then you're gonna roll this, which I'll demonstrate soon. And then each strip you're just gonna put in. You're not gonna like cut the meat and then throw it all in. You want each piece to be like, have the the marinade and stuff that stuff all around it you know if you throw it all in at once you're gonna either have to toss and turn it a lot which you can do that's another thing you can do i just feel like you get better results when you cut up the meat have the pile and then start putting it in individually all right so i got my little station set up um anytime i feel like this just goes without saying but anytime you're handling raw meat do not touch your mouth. Do not touch anything else. Uh, wash your hands, you know, use gloves. Food safety is really important. Um, I'm in healthcare. Before healthcare, I was a mechanic. And then before that, I actually worked um, for a catering company. So I kind of know a little bit about a lot. I don't know. All right, so here's the thing. This is why I use skirt steak or flank steak over top round or bottom round, which is uh, the, the the common cut for jerky. Skirt steak or flank, flank steak, you just roll up like this, and then you just cut like this. So then you get your strips, and you just dip the strip. It's literally this easy. I do kinda tend to hold the meat a little tight. I will give that a mix in a second. Uh, I kind of tend to hold the meat tight so the roll stays nice and taut. Um, I'm cutting it about half inch. You can do quarter inch, you can do full inch. I feel like it smokes best when you do it 
about, let's say finger width. There we go. How many of your inches a finger is? I always unroll, tuck in. So see how it's getting like frothy at the top? That's okay, don't trip about that. We're gonna address that later. So once you get to the end, you can just like throw this whole piece in. It's just gonna be like a wider piece of jerky. Once you get like your cutting skills down, this is kind of just something that takes a little bit of effort. You'll get to a point where like you can do enough. Okay, so like I got a little tiny strip right there. Honestly, I'm just gonna throw that away. But you see the point. Now another thing about making jerky, like see this fat right here? Fat with jerky, it will go rancid quicker, but the truth about jerky is that it doesn't last long enough to the point where like the fat actually gets rancid, if that makes any sense. So now I'm not gonna do this whole thing and put it on camera to bore you guys, uh, but I will just show you like what I mean with what I'm gonna be doing next. And notice how I'm even like being really precious with my hands because I have not washed them yet. And I'm about to dip them, so. You're just gonna make sure each individual piece has a nice coating on it, right? At this point, since I don't have many pieces in there, I can get away with just kind of like mixing it around like this. But see this frothiness, how it's like, I don't know, it's like the, the head of a beer. So I don't know what exactly that is like from the pineapple to the teriyaki. We blended it, it mixed pretty good together, but see how like we're tossing it like this and it's all just mixing together. So when this marinades in the fridge and you leave it in the fridge for, you know, 48 to 72 hours, you're gonna wanna just take the lid off. You can get gloves to it, just less mess. Uh, and then just toss it, kind of massage it in, keep tossing it just so, uh, more of the flavor and the pineapple can do its thing in terms of tenderizing the meat. So yeah, I'm gonna finish cutting the rest of this, putting it in here. The next step will just be tossing and turning it every 12 hours or so. And then after that, it's gonna be putting it through a colander, letting the juice run off, and then heating up the smoker, throwing it on the smoker. You can do this on a dehydrator. You can also do this in an oven. I'm not gonna show you how to do it on the dehydrator. Uh, I will explain and kind of demonstrate with my dehydrator. Um, and then the oven, I've never used the oven method, but I will kind of walk you through how to do it. I know how to do it. I've just never done it because I have a smoker and I have a dehydrator. All right, so it's been two days and I've done this probably every six hours, every 12 hours, but uh, this is actually probably like 14 hours. So I'm just gonna show you kind of like what it looks like, see like the discoloration. So that's why it is important to just mix it up. So it's also in the fridge, hands are gonna be really cold, but you're just gonna wanna kinda toss and turn it. I mean, this is a very full bowl, so it's a little harder to do. But that's all you're really doing. You don't wanna really tear the meat in half. You're just gently tossing it just like this, getting all the liquid mixed in and around and on the meat. And then you're gonna kinda just push it back down like that because you ideally want it sitting under the level of the liquid. And then, yeah, wash your hands. All right, it is time to make the jerky. So we're just gonna pull this out. I did mix it last night. And then all you're gonna do for this step is pour it all into a colander and get as much of the liquid you can off. This is a pretty big batch. So yeah, now we're just gonna let it sit for a little bit. We're gonna kind of help speed up the process here and there just by doing that. And then we're gonna go fire up the smoker. And then I'll show you guys while we're waiting how to do this in a dehydrator or an oven. All right, so just plug your dehydrator in. Now I'm not gonna fully show you the process because I'm doing this on my smoker. Let's make jerky on a dehydrator. You're just gonna crank it to the highest setting 
And then uh, I like to give it like five minutes until it's warm. And then you literally just are gonna take a strip out and then fill as much in as you can with leaving spaces in between because the air does need to circulate. Once your racks are filled, you're just gonna leave it on there for like five, six, seven hours. It all depends on the cut of meat and everything and how thick it is. I do like to, so just like pretend that all the jerky's in there. Every few hours, I like to rotate the racks. So just see what I'm doing with like flipping them. Just cause the top one does take a little longer than the bottom one to cook. So how at least my dehydrator works is it just pumps out uh, heat and air out of there and then goes through here and that's where the magic happens. And if you don't have a dehydrator, get a dehydrator because these things are amazing. You can make a lot of really nice things. I think this was like 40 or $50 on Amazon. Honestly, it's not really bad. Bonus tip, if you have a dehydrator and you like collecting morel mushrooms, you can dehydrate your mushrooms and then they keep for way longer. Those are some morels that we found this year. And then we also found some golden oysters. And then this is just a jar of pheasant backs, which I'm not super uh, huge on, but it's a nice little collection. Now I've never done it in the oven, but from what I've been told and what I've learned that this is how you can do it in the oven, you put the oven on the lowest setting and then you take like a wooden spoon, not plastic, obviously, just pretend this is wooden. And you just put it in there like that so it can vent. Uh, you put the jerky on a cooling rack that's over a cookie sheet, throw it in, and then just check it every like three hours or so. All right, while we're waiting on that, I got the Traeger going, just letting it kind of warm up, heat up. There's all that smoke that we love. So. I just put it to 180. I feel like that's good enough. Other people put it to smoke. Other people put it to 225. This is just how I do it. I don't want you to be in my comment section crying up a storm about, ooh. I'm probably gonna need some pellets later. So we'll get those, we'll get this jerky on next and then just check it every few hours so you guys can see the process. All right, so here's another like jerky debate thing. Some people will, uh, Put their jerky on wet some people will like put it on a paper towel and everything especially when you're doing it on a smoker i think putting it on wet more than okay it will take a little longer like an hour hour and a half longer um but i just think you're gonna get more flavor out of it if you're gonna do it on a dehydrator prepare to clean the dehydrator after if you're gonna do it in the oven i'm i'm assuming you expect some burning to happen so maybe like do it dry also i forgot this important tip if you're not doing this on a smoker and you want a little bit of smoke taste in it, this is like against all the barbecue gods, all this crap, I don't care. Put a tiny dash of like liquid smoke in the marinade in that pineapple teriyaki that we made and you'll get a little bit of a smoky taste. It's nice. It's not, you know, the same as a smoker, but yeah. So we're just gonna put that on there and then we're gonna go outside and put it on. All right, so you probably noticed I did grab gloves. Um, it just makes this part easier. So this is gonna be a tight squeeze. I'm gonna have to get it on both racks, kind of in the back too. So you just grab one piece at a time and place it in like that. Camera angle, I don't know how much you can see, so I'm trying to get down low. My neighbors right now are probably like, why is he doing squats in front of his smoker? Also, another thing I learned the hard way when you're doing a uh, beef jerky on a smoker, see like these negative areas where the, the drip tray isn't? Try to keep it over the drip tray. That's a pretty big tip actually. Um, if the meat drops down there, uh, a fire can start actually. So ask me how I know that. I actually caught it in the nick of time. I was able to save it. Uh, I was not able to save the jerky, which was very unfortunate, but learning the hard way is learning the best way. Now, kind of the same thing as the dehydrator. You can actually 
you want to have some separation, but like the jerky is going to get dehydrated in the smoker. So I do think you can put them like, they can be touching a little bit because literally in the first like few hours, uh, they're gonna shrink and then there's gonna be some air in between the pieces of jerky. I do think this is the most jerky that I've ever done at once. Um, I kind of know like how much will fit on my smoker. Yeah, so I'm kind of pushing it with the spacing and everything right now, but I think we can make it work. My goal right now is to just get it on and have a little bit of spacing. All right, so like we got some room back there. Um, I want to make sure nothing is overhanging. I don't want a fire to start. Like I'll take this one. Oh, that's really long. That won't fit down there. Let's take this one and put it right there. Now I'll kind of move them around a little bit just so there's more spacing so airflow can happen. Again, they will be drying up as well and then creating their own space. So like if they're touching a little bit, that's okay. All right, it's been a little over an hour. Just want to show you guys like the hour by hour progress. See how it's kind of drying up. See how they're getting, you know, the more space in between and everything. That's why it's okay that they're touching a little bit. Might separate a few that are close, but yeah, we're looking good so far. All right, just two hour check-in on the jerky. See how it's getting a little more red, getting a little more good looking. Yeah, it looks great. It's gonna turn out real good. All right, it's been like five, six hours and I can tell the ones on the top are done. Uh, these ones, I'm gonna give them another like 45 minutes maybe. But what you're gonna wanna do, is just pull them off. I do like to put them on a rack. Now the problem with doing a stripped flank steak or a strip skirt steak jerky like this is they just don't really fit the best. This piece is a little thicker and it's super long. But I think it'll still be good. That's the one that I'll test. And then if it's not done, I'll just put it back on. And uh, the top rack usually cooks a little quicker too, if you are using a smoker. Hence why these ones need more time. All right, I just pulled all the jerky off. Um, that was the stuff I pulled off earlier. I should have pulled it a little sooner. It was probably on for like a total of six hours. But again, you just check and see how like, how much give it has. If it's too dry, you'll know. This piece, for example, <clears throat> it's not bad, it's still good. It just would have been better if I pulled it off a little sooner. But yeah, there you go. Skirt steak, pineapple teriyaki jerky on the smoker.